As you can see from this beautiful outer plant being covered in all of these flowers, it is summer right now and a bunch of these have just opened up this morning and so it's a great time for me to come through and harvest a bunch of these. And I thought I'd bring you along and share with you a couple of really delicious ways of using these flowers, starting with something that I've wanted to make for quite a long time now, outer flower fritters. They smell so fresh and summery. And when you're picking these outer flowers, go for the ones that have just freshly opened. And you can tell that by seeing that they've got all of the pollen still intact and they're not wilted. And this pollen is really important. That's the stuff that has most of the flavor and the nutrition. You just look out for the little yellow parts. And rain will wash that pollen off. So it's best to pick these on a warm, dry, sunny day. And I usually do it in the morning. If there are any bugs on your outer flowers, you can just like blow them off, but just don't wash these underwater because you'll wash away that pollen. All right, so the outer flower fritters are pretty simple to make. We've just got some flour, baking powder, icing sugar, and a pinch of salt, and I'm mixing that together in a bowl. Next, I'm just adding a bit of sparkling water, <laughs> try not to spill it, and mixing this in should make the batter nice and frothy. Now I'm heating some vegetable oil up in a pot and getting that nice and hot so that when I drop a little bit of batter in, it starts to fizz straight away. All right, now we are ready to do this. So I'm just coating these flower heads in some of the batter. And this looks a little thicker than I'd like, but that's okay for this one. So I'll just put that into the oil. <laughs> and look at that, so cool. Uh, and this should only take around 20 or 30 seconds to get nice and golden. Check that out, that is so, so cool. For the rest of them, I'm just gonna make the batter slightly thinner with some extra sparkling water, and I'll go ahead and cook the rest up. These are looking so awesome already, but the last thing I'm doing is just dusting over some icing sugar, and then drizzling over some honey. And these are often served as dessert alongside like some stewed fruit or rhubarb or even some ice cream. Let me give it a bit of a taste, but just one thing that's important to note is that the stems are actually toxic and so you don't wanna eat those. They're okay as just a little handle, but that's it. All right, here we go. Oh, that is really good. <laughs> I mean, how can it not be good when it's covered in batter and honey and icing sugar? So that's kind of a lot of the flavor, but you get a bit of the flavor of the summery kind of elderberry flower taste, but it's not really the strongest flavor as part of this. As a dessert, this would be such like a novel thing to serve if you have someone over, and it's such a cool looking and interesting talking point as well. Hmm, <laughs> that is really, really nice. And once you're done, you just got this little stem on the end. And of course, just make sure you chuck that away. All right, the next thing I'm making is outer flower cordial, which is really nice and pretty easy to make. I need to pick a bunch more of the outer flowers. I'm going for around 20 that I'm gonna use. And I'm just starting by going through and pulling off all the little white flowers and avoiding getting too much of the green stems in there. This step is definitely the more tedious part of this, but good things take time, so I'll just work away on this slowly. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So now I'm just adding two liters of water, as well as some citric acid, and then the zest and juice from one lemon. And I'm using some lemon out of the freezer from when they're in season during winter. So this has actually been really good to have. So I'm just gonna heat this up until it starts boiling. Then take it off the heat and just cover it up and I'll let these outer flowers infuse into the liquid overnight. Okay, it's the next day and this is looking like it's infused pretty well. So I'm just straining the liquid through a muslin bag, just getting out all of the flowers and any of the lemon zest. Then putting that liquid back on the stove top and adding some sugar. And I know this does look like a lot of sugar, but we are making just a concentrate, which will then be watered down when I use it. I'm bringing this back up to the boil and giving it a good stir for a few minutes until all the sugar is fully dissolved. I did also put these sterilized glass bottles in the oven for about 10 minutes so that the glass can handle that really hot liquid going into them. And then just seal it with a lid. And as this cools, the lid should suck down to fully seal the bottles. Another thing you can do is to freeze it into some ice cubes. So I'm gonna try that out as well. 
These just look so awesome and I'm so stoked to have made some of this. It looks really, really great. And you can use the cordial or syrup just as it is on things like pancakes, which is pretty nice. But the main thing I'm doing with it is just adding a bit to a glass and topping the rest up with sparkling water. And if you wanted to, you can also make this into some different alcoholic drinks as well. Cheers. Mm. That's really good. It's really refreshing. It's got a nice sort of tangy flavor, a bit of the floral taste as well from the outer flowers. And yeah, it's just pretty cool to have a nice refreshing summer drink that's partly grown from my garden. And of course you can forage for outer flowers as well in some areas. So it's kind of cool to make use of that if you know how to identify them correctly and can get them from around where you live. And it's also pretty handy having the ice cubes as well, although I think because of the high sugar content, they came out a little bit sticky and slightly wet, like they weren't completely frozen. But it is about the right amount to make a drink, so you can just let it dissolve and your drink will be ready to go. Another really simple way to use the flowers is just to put them in a dry and dark place until they dry out. And then you can make tea from them, which is a great way to take advantage of the medicinal benefits that outer flowers have. Like some people use them as a diaphoretic, which means something that can induce a healthy sweat and support the fever process if you're sick with a cold or a flu. And they're also really high in antioxidants as well. If you want to learn about some other uses for this plant, including how to use the berries, then check out this video up here. But don't forget to get out there and enjoy the planet, um, be one with nature, and yeah, just don't um, don't scare your neighbours while you're at it. <laughs>